Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have any regrets? There are no regrets this evening. Thank you. Any declarations of pecuniary interest, Council? Thank you. Um, we could, um, it would help us if we had a mover and seconder to resolve in a committee of the whole. Councillor Kahn, Councillor Lapworth, all in favor? Opposed to any? We are now resolved into committee of the whole for the public's benefit. That puts us into a form of our meeting where the rules are somewhat relaxed and we can give matters more attention than we can in the formality of a regular council meeting. And this is the ideal environment for planning decisions. Uh, before we begin, uh, we're going to have a number of public hearings tonight, and for all of our public hearings, the following applause. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting, or make written submission to the Town of Oakville in respect of a proposed official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and or plan of subdivision or condominium, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of Town Council to the Ontario Municipal Board and may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Municipal Board unless, in the opinion of the Board, uh, there are reasonable grounds to do so. And for greater clarity, it's either oral or written. You, you don't have to do both. So if you've provided us with written, you don't need to read it to us. Uh, you can trust us to read uh, uh, what you've written. Uh, on the other hand, if you, if you wish to put belt and suspenders on your submission and, and and both submitted in writing and orally, we will, uh, we will listen to uh, the oral version as well. Um, Council, to begin, we have um, a number of consent items, number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and two confidential consent items, C1 and C2. And um, I would like to suggest that discussion items 14, 15, and 16 might also be dealt with by consent, uh, but of course it's up to you. Uh, Councillor uh, Johnston? I'll move that. Thank you. So uh, is there any discussion of any of these items? I understand, hold on, we have one from Councillor Elgar. Oh, I'll do that in just a second. I'm looking for Councillor Elgar's, um, thank you. So, Councillor Johnston, having regard to item number three on the consent agenda, uh, do you have before you a suggestion from Councillor Elgar? Yes, as amended. So, um, are you moving that too? Yes, I am. Let me read it for the public. Um, item three, is that right, Councillor Elgar? That's correct. Yeah. That clause 39 of the subdivision agreement be amended to read that the owner agrees to conduct a pump test, survey of the static water level, and quality testing of all wells within 500 meters of the plan. The owner further agrees to resolve any claims of well interruption due to construction of municipal services to the satisfaction of the Region of Halton's development coordinator. So with all of that before us, uh, Councillor Adams. Could we just double check there's no members of the audience here for any of those items? Oh, thank you. Um, I meant, that's the other note I have here from the clerk. Councillor Dumoff. Does staff have a presentation on the in zone? Um, because if they do, I'd like to see it. Okay. So Councillor Johnston will, we, we separate things on request, so that's now separated. Um, uh, before we um, proceed to vote on items 14, 15, and 6, oh, I'm sorry, on items 15 and 16, I want to poll the members of the audience if there's any individuals here with information for council on item 15 or 16 on tonight's agenda, which uh, more specifically and particularly is the design guidelines and the livable by design awards terms of reference. No one? All right. I'll put the vote. All in favor? Opposed, if any. Those matters are now adopted. Now, uh, Councillor DeMoff, um, we can turn to item 14. And Mr. Nethery, you are here. Um, Councillor DeMoff, um, before Mr. Nethery begins, I, I just want to say on behalf of the members of council, who have served now for several months on the uh, subcommittee, the end zone subcommittee. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. Um, we've been very impressed with um, both the work that Mr. Nethery and his associates have done, 
and the uh, quality of the presentations that he's given us. He does have the thankless job of trying to make, I mean, really, this is, as I've said before, this is the most important part of translating the principles and policies of the livable Oakville official plan into reality because this is making the underlying zoning bylaws conform with the bold vision of livable Oakville. And it is, it's been a matter of changing, of, of going through, is it 800 pages of previous zoning bylaws, Mr. Nethery? Uh, uh, through your worship, I believe we're at 850 pages today. Yeah, yes. So so it's it's got to be, it's at one and the same time, it's the, it's the most important thing to complete the livable local vision, and it's got to be the definition of tedium at the same time when you consider the volume of paper you've got to go through. So uh, <laughs> we will now turn to Mr. Nethery to make tedium exciting. I'll, I'll do my best tonight, your worship and members of council, and to do it as expediently as possible for uh, the benefit of everybody in the room tonight. Uh, uh, we're here tonight uh, to provide a brief summary on our first draft numbered version 1.0 of the 2014 zoning bylaw. Uh, there's a lot of content in, in the document that is before you tonight and a little bit of content that is still coming forward. So what we were hoping to focus our presentation on tonight was the process that has been undertaken up to this point to create the document, the, the principles that have informed the creation of this draft, and the opportunities for continued review, input, and for individuals to inform themselves about this project, uh, concluding uh, with the steps that staff will be taking after uh, tonight's presentation. And while I certainly appre appreciate uh, your kind words, Your Worship, I would be remiss to not, uh, if I didn't recognize the, the many staff members who've been involved in this project. Uh, First and foremost, among, among them, Ms. Boddington, uh, who I know is behind me, Mr. Rubick and Mr. Sunderland, who are outside tidying up our drop-in workshop right now, and Mr. Birch and Froze, who've been putting in overtime to make sure that the graphics look the way that they're supposed to be looking. Uh, our four uh, advisory contacts, including uh, Ms. Anderson and Ms. Childs, who are, are here tonight, Mr. Doe and Tudor, who uh, send the regrets. Our 24 technical advisory contacts from engineering and parks and recreation, from the library, from conservation, Halton, and all sorts of related agencies. Uh, the wonderful input from the end zone subcommittee received over the last year and nine months, and uh, from the content, the content received from over 200 individual points of contact from the consultation work staff have been undertaking to date. So over the last uh, several months, or one year and nine months as my talking points have been stating, uh, staff have presented a number of technical papers to the end zone subcommittee. We've had discussions with the committee on issues related to those papers being the individual uses that are proposed to be permitted in these zones, the numbers and the standards that are associated with those zones, uh, certain changes in regulation with respect to very specific issues. All that together has produced uh, a number of zoning regulations which have been consolidated, edited and reviewed uh, at least five times now internally to result in the lavender copy that's before you tonight. Uh, we've also been out in the community running our all about zoning workshops and facilitating a series of open houses on design issues and the zoning in low density residential neighborhoods. Uh, this iterative process altogether has resulted in the document uh, that is before you for information tonight. Uh, the principles that have informed this draft were established in the terms of reference that you approved in, in October of 2011. First and foremost, we are implementing the livable Oakville plan. We cannot have a new zoning bylaw that does not conform to that document, that does not implement that document. Uh, staff have prepared a document that, in our opinion, is getting us to that point. Uh, where we need additional direction uh, with to uh, what conformity looks like, We've set eight additional, eight additional principles as well. Uh, without going into too much detail, those standards and approaches end up resulting in a number, uh, a number of approaches uh, to, the, uh, to developing the regulations that are in that document. It involves carrying forward parts of the current 1984-63 zoning bylaw. It also contains parts from our North Oakville zoning bylaw, 2009-189, uh, with various tweaks and adjustments that respond to the development situations and the current uh, and current existing conditions that are south of Dundas Street. 
uh, we've looked at best practices from neighboring municipalities and have adapted those where appropriate to fit that same Oakville context. Uh, and it's also introducing a number of new concepts which are quite, uh, I'll say, adventurous and forward thinking for a municipality uh, of Oakville size. We're looking at surface parking area restrictions on the sizes of those, on locations of those, of landscaping around and within those as appropriate. Uh, as, as your worship has said on many occasions, zoning is a very key place for the visions and policies of the Livable Oakville, Oakville plan to become enforceable and applicable rules and regulations. Uh, to put it proverbially speaking, the rubber hits the road with, this, with the zoning document itself. Uh, and it's incumbent on any persons in the town with an interest in these rules and how these processes work uh, to make themselves aware of this draft, to inform themselves of this content, and if they have any questions, to please reach out to staff and see if we can get those issues addressed. So, 850 pages of current zoning. The draft itself set 350 some odd pages and counting. How do we make this as easy as possible for residents and businesses to address? Uh, our first step are to hold a series of townwide open houses. There is a change uh, with respect to the map that is shown on screen right now and the content that's in your staff report in that it turns out there are three St. Joseph's churches in Oakville and I booked the wrong one. So we have a very simple fix is to move one of the town hall sessions up to St. Joseph's Portuguese Church in Palermo. This ensures that all six wards have an open house as well. It gives us a commercial and employment focused open house at town hall as well and one bonus evening here as well. Uh, at, each of those, at each of those eight sessions, we'll have draft content with us. The, the event will be flooded with staff to be able to answer those, those sorts of questions uh, and is probably the best opportunity for uh, the ordinary resident to come out and interact one-on-one -on -one with staff. Uh, we're also continuing to work away on building uh, individual PDFs that are tied with some basic information to properties through our Explore Oakville uh, public GIS framework. Uh, the first draft of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm one paragraph ahead of myself. There is, there is functionality within our online GIS today to allow for a resident to find their property, to click on it, and be presented with some basic with a URL, rather, uh, that contains some information. Uh, the solution that staff are working on right now would be linking that URL to a PDF with a basic disclaimer and some basic zoning information as to the regulations that apply. Uh, there's some internal uh, software updates that I am by no means educated upon enough to, to comment further that may change how this approach works further on, but this is, in the interim, this is what we are working towards. And we also continue to meet with our various stakeholder groups and offer our on-demand all about zoning workshop to members of the public. Or if the Jays game isn't exactly doing it for you, we do offer it online at the URL that's shown on screen. Uh, it's also linked through our, our project website itself. Uh, the technical papers that we have presented, the presentations that we are delivering, uh, the content, our consultation information and history, as well as the draft documents themselves are all housed on our project webpage. That is the best source of, of the most recent and up-to-date information on this project for anybody who is looking out for it. And with respect to the continued development of the new special provisions, staff are providing status updates through this website in terms of when the documents would next be updated and, that, and the remaining information completed. Uh, so going forward for today, there are a number of issues. They are flagged with disclaimers in the draft bylaw today that staff are looking to do continued re review, research, and input on. Uh, four of them are shown up on screen right now. Uh, and what the public uh, needs, public need, the public does continue, uh, need to continue to be involved through to the end of this project, which is still targeted for early in 2014. Uh, that is largely because if an item does look good today and it's satisfactory to uh, the, the individual reader, because of the comprehensive nature of this document and the fact that there, it's basically a system that is being reviewed, a regulation may end up changing as a result of another change. So uh, from a past consultant who's represented people on these projects to having also managed these kinds of projects in the past, you have to remain involved on, through until the end. Uh, can't stress it enough, to be uh, quite honest. Uh, 
in terms of when the right time to actually speak, uh, make your comments heard uh, in order to communicate your interests to staff, uh, we'd maintain that now is the time for people with an interest uh, to make themselves aware to us, to submit their comments in writing with respect to their issues and or requests. Uh, as much as we've gone through a number of reviews internally already, uh, I, there are errors in this document today. I, I'm aware of six of them as it stands right now, and I'm sure others are aware of more. Uh, various blanks that we haven't filled, some overset text issues with the graphic design software we're, we're using. Uh, so despite our, our best efforts in auditing and review, uh, we aren't perfect. There may be some properties where the zoning that's applied and the zoning that exists doesn't necessarily line up. And with 50,000 properties to audit, uh, we could really use the help of the public who have an interest in this project to verify the rules that do apply to them, to make the 10 minute phone call to us to have that discussion at some point over the next 9, 10, 11 months. Staff are also setting aside three days for individual meetings with stakeholders where there are larger issues that need to be addressed. Uh, I have, our, we already have two uh, such stakeholders who have reached out to staff uh, in this regard. Uh, we'll be sending out information through our project mailing list, uh, which is the best way to find out the most up to minute information as well without having to watch the website all the time. Uh, those dates will likely be late spring and early summer. Uh, we'll likely hold them here, and if evening times are requested, we can make those available as well. Uh, our consultation summaries from all these various outreach activities are proposed to come forward into the future staff reports uh, that we would be bringing forward to Council, uh, currently targeting early September for one of those. Uh, there may be a need for those sorts of comments at the statutory public meeting. And then, of course, addressing those final concerns in the final, in the final report covering the draft for adoption. Uh, we're intending to mirror the livable Oakville process uh, in this regard, bringing forward a summary of those comments, uh, the summary of the staff, response that is, the staff response that is given to those. Uh, we need to complete a review of the special provisions right now, which is, uh, and we're working full steam ahead on those. Uh, we are looking to schedule two future meetings of the in-zone subcommittee to discuss interim conclusions and recommendations, perhaps to get additional feedback from uh, those members of the subcommittee. Uh, and why we're especially, why we're really trying to emphasize the need to contact us now is that we will be preparing an updated draft for the statutory round of consultation, an open, an open house, and a statutory public meeting, not unlike the ones that you'll be experiencing tonight, just with a lot more properties, uh, in the fall. Uh, I guess our, the main takeaways that, uh, we're looking to, that staff is looking to deliver tonight is that there remain multiple opportunities for members of the public, for council to make contact with staff to discuss this bylaw uh, and to make sure that the, the issues that are designed to, desired to be addressed do get addressed in, in a fashion that is appropriate. Uh, the easiest starting point would be to ensure that you are on our project mailing list. Uh, we can be contacted through either of the means shown on screen or by contacting the town itself and asking to talk to somebody about the end zone project. Uh, thank you for your time and attention, Your Worship, members of council, staff are happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Nethery. Uh, any questions, council? Well, I'll thank you and I'll, I'll give you a bit of a rhetorical question. Um, Will it be um, a satisfactory outcome if the newspaper headline is Oakville Planning Department Seeks Help of Public? <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Through your worship, From my yes. perspective, anyway. I think, I, I thought the note you gave there that we're looking for help from the public is a really important note and it's a really important part of the the brand and the identity of the planning department that, uh, that we've built together. And I was really happy to hear it. And uh, I, I love the responsive consultation that your department is known for. So thank you very much for the report. I'll look for a motion to receive. Councillor Kahn, all in favor? Opposed if any? Carried. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Um, all right, public hearings. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, only seven of them. And the first one is uh, the public meeting. So all of these, if I don't make a mistake, all of these are, um, uh, none of these are decision reports. These are all consultation 
uh, items. And that means that we're, we're here to hear the comments of the public. Uh, planning will be taking the comments received from the public. Oh, wait, there, number eight is a recommendation report. So except for that one, we're planning is looking for public comments and we'll be taking them away and uh, working to resolve the issues raised by the public comments and uh, as well as the issues noted in the, uh, in the report. And uh, as I say, number eight is, actually number eight is an example of the process. We've already had uh, that type of meeting for number eight and now number eight has come forward with a recommendation report. So uh, we'll start off with number seven and we're gonna look to Paul Demchak and uh, uh, take it away, sir. Good evening, Mayor Burton and members of council. Staff is in receipt of a zoning bylaw amendment application for the property located at 174 Lakeshore Road West, 91 and 87 Brookfield Road. The property is specifically located at the southeast corner of Lakeshore and Brookfield. It is comprised of three municipal uh, properties. Um, currently on the site exists uh, three single detached dwellings. To the east of the property and to the west are existing townhouse uh, dwelling units. To the south are single detached units and to the north are commercial land uses. The specific proposal is for a four-story, 33-unit apartment building with 400 square meters of ground floor retail. To the further south of the property, to the east, I guess to the right on your screen, are four additional uh, residential townhouse units. I've attached a few elevations. So this is the west elevation. This would be the concept plan looking from Brookfield Road. This is the north elevation looking from Lakeshore Road. The south elevation. And finally, the east elevation. As well, this is a section showing the breakdown in terms of the uses proposed. So at the ground floor, you see the blue, which is the retail component proposed along Lakeshore. Uh, above that would be the three floors of residential, and further to the south would be the townhouse units, as well as two floors of underground parking. In terms of the official plan, um, the Livable Oak official plan designates the property as central business district. Um, the Central Business District considers uh, mixed-use developments uh, within this designation, as well as a maxim, permits a maximum of four stories. In terms of the zoning, uh, the, f the north two properties are, are, are zoned um, H2R8, so there's a holding provision on the property, as well as special provision 625. 625 actually relates to an old zoning bylaw amendment application that allowed for seven townhouse units on these, uh, these northern two properties. The one, the further, the property to the south is zoned R04, and that allows for a single detached dwelling currently. A public information meeting was held on April 3rd, uh, 2013. Approximately 34 residents came out to that meeting. Uh, some of the issues that staff noted from this meeting include density, traffic and parking, grading and drainage of the site, uh, potential shadowing, privacy and overlook impacts, as well as trees. In terms of the next steps, staff will be completing their analysis of the application and in the future bring forward a recommendation report to uh, Council. And tonight's recommendation is that comments from the public with, with respect to this application be received. Thank you, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, there might be a couple. Councillor Duddick. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you very much for the presentation, and I'm glad to see the um, various letters compiled for Council's uh, review of this application. Um, before we go to members of the public, um, I was concerned, and I appreciate the fact that on page 174 you've indicated matters to be considered, and you've sort of or, uh, itemized rather some of the points that people had raised through the first public information session. Just to clarify, when we look at the overlook and shadowing, is there going to be a shadow impact study required of the applicant? Like, I know you're looking into the issues. Mm -hmm. My concern is that we actually get a study with actual data to come back to, to review. Is that going to be completed? 
staff is still looking into, um, I guess, uh, at the time of pre-consultation, we didn't flag that as an issue being uh, it four stories. Um, we are going to meet with the applicant, subs obviously subsequent to this meeting, and look at potentially looking into that, uh, that shadowing story. I would strongly suggest that uh, that be pursued, given the fact that you've got such an overlook of the uh, neighboring properties, and there's grading issue, which of course you've identified as well. The other question I had pertained to in the context of the stormwater management report, does that deal with drainage concerns? Because I've met with residents who live in the um, townhouses to the east there, and there have been problems with drainage and the wall, the retention wall along there, retainer wall rather. And so that's another issue that I'd really make sure that is addressed through the context. Sorry, and finally, <laughs> apologize. Um, when you say traffic impacts, again, that will be a proper traffic impact study that they will, given the fact that we have, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word, a dog's breakfast there in terms of Fortino's, the Brookfield, the Plaza, Maurice. You've got various uh, entrance and entrances and exits. So traffic in the area is a big concern. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor DeMoff, and then Councillor Bird. When you showed one of those um, um, cross sections, the townhouses look like they're individual units. Are they townhouses or are they um, there? On the, on the right hand side there, it makes it look like there's units on each floor. Right, so my understanding based on discussion with the applicant is that it would be one unit vertically for each unit. Okay. Thank you. Just to follow up, so that's four townhouses with three floors, three correct. residential floors, correct. rather than 12. Uh, okay, yes, thank correct. you. That's correct, yeah. Um, all right, Councillor Bird. My question is, uh, I guess the schematic on page 183, I think it's, you call it the roof, uh, proposed roof plan. Though it's the first time that I can recall seeing, I'm assuming those blue things are solar panels. I will let the applicant answer that in their presentation. We sure, in terms we of, got a, okay, I'm good. Yeah. the applicant. That's the first time I just wanted to know. Now we're sure. looking for things that identifying if that's the the uh, general um, accepted symbol for solar panels. I thought it was an awning, uh, quite frankly, but. Uh, that's why I want to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. Maybe it's a bunch of chaise lounges. <laughs> uh... All right. Any other questions from council? All right. Um, and is the applicant here? And is the applicant ready to present? Well, then come on down. It's your turn. Welcome. Council looks forward to your information. And I gather from these questions, you may, you, you've given, you've been given some indication as to things council's curious about. Yes, thank you very much. My name is John Cowell. I'm an architect with the RCOP group. And I have Paul Johnson here, who is our planner on this file. And I was going to show some of the slides which Mr. Demchak has shown you already. So I, I won't necessarily try and repeat that. But I will address questions, and I'm here to respond to any other issues that come up. Um, one of the, uh, as far as the solar panel issue is concerned, yes, but bearing in mind that this uh, is a zoning application and the concept that's uh, before you is, is uh, a preliminary concept in sketch form and everybody's thinking green these days. We would hope that uh, uh, rooftop solar panels are increasingly um, the, the order of the day, and, and if we get over the hurdles to the point where this goes into the, the site plan application stage and the detailed design stage, that that's something that we would like to see happen. Uh, as far as the proposal itself is concerned, and perhaps I will take the benefit of some of the documents that w we have prepared here, if I can, well, I don't know if I can operate your uh, machine here, but the, uh, Where's your? 
I'm a Mac guy. This is <laughs> sure. Um, one of the challenges that I think we face here is trying to come up with a proposal which speaks to both the, the future of your official plan and the reality of today, what we find on the site. And to that extent, if you look at the context, we're on Lake Shore uh, facing what is essentially a Main Street's context. And over time, I would expect to see uh, development of a form that you find further east, which is retail stores with apartments above, tight to the sidewalk. So that's what we wanted to propose along Lakeshore, and then turn the corner and, and gradually make a transition into a lower density form of residential development. And that's that staircasing effect in the townhouse component, which we would argue forms a kind of a transition between the, the main streets development along Lakeshore and the, the single family homes to the south. The challenge is that to the east of us, we don't have Main Street's buildings. And so we have a, what is essentially a townhouse development at right angles to Lake Shore. And so the question is, do we design for that existing reality, which I suspect is perhaps 15, 20 years old or older, or do we design to the context of the official plan? And we've tried to do a little bit of both here, and I'm not sure that we're there yet, but we've built close to the the street line on Lakeshore, and we've stepped back from the lot line to the east as the building uh, moves to the south. And perhaps I can show that if I can just scroll through here. You see the, the blue retail stores, and there's a, the yellow indicating a stairwell at the end. That pretty well is tight to the east lot line. But as the building moves to the south, which in this case is to the right, the setback increases to six meters which is basically the setback of the buildings to the east of us. So we're, what they're giving us in the way of a setback, we're responding with a similar setback. But we have heard concerns about overlook and shadow and traffic, and of course we're here to hear those concerns, and then after tonight's meeting we'll be going away and trying to digest that and see how we can respond. So with that, I think I'll, uh, I'm not going to go through all these slides again, but I'll answer any questions, and Mr. Dem or, uh, Mr. Johnson... Um, is here to perhaps speak to some of the planning issues, so. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, do you have questions? Councillor Duddick. Thank you, and thank you very much for uh, attending this evening, and uh, I dare say you'll be hearing quite uh, firmly from the residents in the area as to their uh, opinions and views regarding the development. Um, to that end, did, was there any um, consideration, because I know Councillor DeMoff and myself did not have any um, contact, say, with your firm regarding what was being proposed other than when we saw it was deemed a complete application. Were there any discussions with the immediate area residents in regards to their concerns or feedback regarding what they would or would not like to see developed on the site? In other words, was work done prior to submitting an application? Uh, no, I think uh, our, our understanding was that that's the process that we're engaged in now. And uh, we hope to take this comments and uh, consultation. We've had the open house. We're going to hear some more here tonight. And I'm sure we'll go away and see what we can do. To that end, if we were able to arrange an appointment maybe with some of the residents who are representative of the residential association there, would you be agreeable to meeting with sure. Councillor DeMoff yeah. and myself and discussing those a little bit more? Absolutely. Yeah, no Excellent. Problem. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, well, perhaps um, I might ask a question. When you, when you look at um, the immediate environment of the subject site when you look east and west there's a there's a street pattern there's a pattern to the streetscape and um, I'm wondering why you want to break that pattern by by uh, uh, creating this island of high intensity uh, in a in that uh, in that otherwise uh, lower intensity streetscape either either one of you want to give us some feedback on that well, um, it, it, 
it goes to the point I was trying to raise, whether or not you're designing for the past or the future or the present. I mean, we have a context and it's real, and we're going to have to respond to that, and I understand that. But I dare say that the kind of uh, development uh, that you're referring to, where you have townhouses that were basically built in the backyards of other houses, and if you look back, maybe I can take you back to that diagram, uh, the aerial photo. What you have on the, on the first block to the east of us is a row of street facing houses and then you've got another row of houses in what almost certainly in the past were, were backyards for houses similar to the ones that are on Brookfield. And you've got a context where you're at the intersection of what is going to be someday your main street, your main downtown street. It is already. And so we're trying to say, all right, we, our client wants to redevelop it. Uh, should they be replicating the form that we find next door, which really doesn't conform with your long-term vision for a kind of Oakville Main Street's concept, or, or should we uh, anticipate that? And, and we're trying to find some balance where we, we respect the, the reality of the context that's there, but we sort of building for the future. I don't know if that's... If I could just add, uh, Your Worship, um, the lands, as you may know from the staff report, are designated central business district in the official plan. And very specific provision is made there for height and use and design. And if I might say, this proposal exactly responds to those requirements in that it's within the height limitation. It has all the uses that are called for. It has the mix of uses. It organizes parking and other elements in the way that we think the official plan calls for. So we understand that there are going to be questions and concerns about traffic and storm drainage uh, and these other detailed matters. And of course that's why uh, the applicant has, has had us put together five technical studies that were submitted in support of the application are on the town's website and anybody, any members of the public are free to look at those and those are out for review right now with uh, town staff. But in terms of the, uh, the essence of the project, it flows from the official plan. Okay, so I should understand then that you're less concerned about fitting into the present than fitting into one of the possible futures under the official plan. Yes, th sir, there's a plan context, obviously, for the area. Uh, the official plan speaks to that in terms of density, in terms of use, mm -hmm. and uh, we think that this is responsive to that, those... Uh, those Okay, Diane. thank you. I have a question for you from Councillor Duddick. Thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, just supplemental to that. The central business designation is for which portion of the property? Because you've had a land assembly take place of three different properties. Right. So which one is supposed to be the central uh, business district, four-story height limit? It applies to the entire property, uh, the entire property. Yes, it does. I think if you look at the staff report, um, uh, you'll see that that's the case. I'm just looking for the page reference. Page, page six of the staff report, uh, Councillor, identifies the property outlined in black. And so the, uh, the western limit of the central business district is at Brookfield Road and the southern limit is at the southern limit of the subject property. I guess what I was getting at was a previous zoning bylaw amendment application was approved on a portion of the site to permit the development of seven townhouse units. That's considerably that right. different than what you're proposing now, correct? Yes, indeed. The graphical depiction of what he said previously is maybe best shown on page 170 of the agenda and the color plate there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, any other questions, Council? Thank you. Then thank you very much for your information. Thank you. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions at the end if that's <coughs> all. Alrighty. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, I understand there's 
uh, a delegation or two listed. Would you uh, would you call the first delegation, please? Yes, the first delegation is Mr. Mike Stevens. Good evening, sir. Thank you for coming. Uh, Council looks forward to your information. Good evening, Your Worship. Good evening, councillors. My name is Mike Stevens. I live at 44 Brookfield Road uh, in the heart of this area. I've lived in Oakville with my family for 36 years, and we have lived on Brookfield for almost 20 years. And we represent, uh, I'm representing uh, the area tonight, uh, plus all the people who uh, are from the Brookfield area here in the audience this evening, but we've tried to consolidate. Can I ask for the clock to go back? Please, I haven't started yet. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Couldn't I'm sorry, could I, the clock is ticking and I'm just introducing myself. Could I start the presentation with the ten, ten minutes full on the clock? <laughs> You'll find that in Committee of the Hall we're quite lenient, so don't worry about that. I'm uh, sure. But Thank you, you would do everyone a favor if you could try to speak toward the microphone. Right. And um, please, please be at ease and, and uh, don't fret. We're, we're, happy to have, we're happy to have your information and we're always impressed when when people take the trouble to speak through one person instead of everybody saying the same thing. So Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. I've put up the to be the most livable town in Canada, which I think is a wonderful vision. We believe it's a great vision for Canada, for uh, Oakville, sorry. Um, however, the Brookfield neighborhood is one step ahead of you because we already are the most livable neighborhood in Oakville. We're very proud of this neighborhood and it's a very unique neighborhood. I'd like to show you why. The community is totally unique. It differs from every other area in the designated central business plan. Every other area, this one is unique. Why is it unique? If you look at the blue line at the top, that's Lakeshore Road, obviously. Uh, the bottom, uh, the white, is Lake Ontario. So we have two very distinct boundaries, north and south of this area. We also have, we're basically a landlocked area. We also have um, three cul-de-sacs that border uh, the Brookfield Road. Brookfield Road itself is a cul-de-sac. Um, Lakewood is a cul-de-sac and Brookfield Crescent is a cul-de-sac. And everyone on those three cul-de-sacs has to exit onto Lakeshore via Brookfield. Um, so you can see that in itself uh, is indicative of an area which differs uh, in a number of ways, both geographically, the cul-de-sacs, and as we've heard before, it is 100% residential. There is no commercial in this area, there's no retail in this area, um, and it consists of nothing above two stories in height. We've got single story detached homes, we have two story detached homes, and we have two story townhomes. There is nothing else in this area that would suggest anything above the tree line. Brock Street, I'm gonna quickly go through these photographs. Brock Street looking south, the townhomes and two residences. Brookfield Road, Lake, looking down Brookfield Crescent, looking north on Brookfield Road, one of the properties, looking east on Burnett, looking e uh, west on uh, Lakewood, looking south on Lakewood, looking north on Brookfield, South Brookfield, all the trees beyond the white car parked on the east side of Brookfield there, uh, would all be coming down as part of the plan that is the proposal that's being put forward. This is the north side of Lakeshore Road, and as you can see with Fortino's there, Meineke, um, other work live buildings closer to Kerr Street, and then you go on down to the Kensington uh, and the Tower Blocks 111 Forsyth, and the other ones in that location on Forsyth. If you look on the south side 
of Lakeshore Road, this separate distinct unity with Lakeshore providing the boards there, is a couple of particular things that I'd like you to note. One is that all the trees on the right hand side as part of this proposal would disappear. They're gone. Secondly, if you look down the left hand side, the fire hydrant, just beyond the fire hydrant, Kathy was referring to that earlier, uh, that is the exit entrance for Fortinos. And when Loblaws first acquired that site, that entrance was okayed by council on the understanding that traffic would be diverted from Fortino's exit and west onto Lakeshore Road. Uh, what, and there are signs there to suggest that's where the traffic should go. However, if you can imagine what is happening, uh, residents for Brookfield and the other areas are coming west on Lakeshore Road. They get into the center lane and someone pulls out from Fortino's and turns east. And that is happening all the time. So if you've got traffic building up in the westbound lane for the stop like on Maurice, someone coming on uh, the middle lane to turn left into Brookfield is suddenly faced by someone being let out of Fortino's and turning east. This intersection, we would suggest, is probably one of the most dangerous uh, intersections in the downtown area. So we have, it's very unique, this area. We feel very passionately about it. No retail, no commercial, no sidewalks. The only sidewalk is on the west side of Brock Street. It's a very relaxed environment, um, very stable environment, multiple age groups. And the skyline is dominated by multiple trees. There are above tree line, there are no buildings visible anywhere in the neighborhood. So you can't see Fortinos, you can't see 111, you can't see any other area. The proposal itself, although the developer call it a four-story building, it is actually five and a half stories. The blue area on the top that was noted uh, is a um, workout area or amenity. And if you take the, the total height, the 15 meters which goes up to the flat roof, and then the amenities, and then the shaft uh, for the elevator, the height of this building is 70 feet. And we've got nothing in this area beyond the two-story buildings I've already mentioned. The Arborist, Arborist report indicates that 16 Lake Shore Road trees would have to come down. Those are city-owned, town-owned trees. 26 private trees would have to come down and one tree would be so badly damaged, not on the property, but on a neighboring property, that would have to come down as well. I didn't want to mention defense lands or Dorval, but I can't resist the temptation because 43 trees, further trees in this area are coming down. The building would dominate the skyline. It would be a massive overbearing eyesore for all of us residents. dramatically changing the Brookfield neighborhood. Additionally, as I've indicated, it would add to an already dangerous intersection, increase traffic congestion, which is already a problem, create additional parking issues and environmental issues, noise, lights, air, etc. Let me look at the retail that's proposed in this development. It's one to four, it's 400 square meters that's on there. Take you back to 101, retailing, there's two key elements. One is the high level, a high level of pedestrian traffic. The other one is a convenient close parking. The proposed retail on this building has neither. There is no consistent uh, pedestrian traffic and there's certainly no parking close. So without these two, the retail is destined to be a failure. The retail experience on Lakeshore Road to date over the last two or three years, within two blocks of the neighborhood area, there are already 49 stores and services. You want pizza, we can give you three different stores. You want coffees, we can give you six. You want dry cleaning, you want upholstery. We've got 49 stores within two blocks walk of this area. The three work-live retail that were developed on both the south side and the north side of Lakeshore Road 
were built. I'm talking about the one that's on the southeast corner of Kerr and Lakeshore, I'm talking about the one on the south side of Lakeshore, west of Kerr, and the one on the north side of Lakeshore, west of Kerr. None of those three work-live retail units were built on residential land. They were already, i.e. McDonald's was there on the south side, uh, and the other ones were all um, uh, commercial land before the town uh, put in the work-live retail. A total of 29 retail-live units are in that area, 10 on the southeast, 10 on the southwest, and 9 on the northwest. A very small core of these retailers have succeeded. However, 70, at least 70 retailers have tried and failed in those 29 work-live units. Some units have rotated four owners who've tried businesses in the last three years alone, two to three years. So retail in this area, A, we've got enough, and B, the sort of retail that sits on the sidewalk with no pedestrian traffic and little or no parking is destined to fail. And I'm just going to run through what we, what we have right now on Lakeshore Road in Liverpool Oakville. Corner of Kerr Street and Lakeshore. South, uh, west, uh, sorry, northwest side of Lakeshore. Same. This is on the south side of, um, just east of Kerr Street was a, a, a tile store until a week and a half ago, and it closed. Uh, you've got two stores here, uh, way cool to twos, been there, closed, boarded up, Lakeshore Road boarded up. This one was a recent store that closed and now gone. Windermere Manor, uh, that will be gone in a couple of weeks. It's the showroom for the Windermere Manor. They only have five units left, so that is another one's going to close, and uh, we'll have the same picture again. And this one is just further east on uh, uh, Lakeshore Road. Uh, this one uh, moved off the north side of Lakeshore Road and moved into the uh, plaza that is anchored by Starbucks, Harvey's, and the Ben and Florentines on the south side. So the retail experience to date on Lakeshore is not good to say the least. Currently, eight are closed or boarded up including two at the busiest intersection in this area. So if you can't get traffic and shopping on the busiest intersection, what chance and why would one want to have it? You don't have pedestrian traffic and you have very, very limited parking. Plan retail to us is a lose-lose situation. If somehow it were to succeed, highly unlikely, but there's no parking and, there's no, and you're going to add to congestion, Assuming it fails, it's just going to be a boarded up set of stores at the end of a 100% residential area. And that's a blight on what is already, we believe, the most livable neighborhood in Oakville. This is the final slide. We believe that the central business district plan was conceived after, we know it was conceived after many years of hard and dedicated work by council members, um, all sorts of experts, and residents ourselves. As I say, it was developed over a number of years before it eventually came to print in 2011. And it was based on the best estimates as we as a community saw it at that time. However, we now have a track record of small business on Lakeshore. Surely now is the time to sit back and say, okay, it looked good at the time, now let's learn from our mistakes and let's make sure we don't make the same mistakes again. Brookfield is periphery on the central plan. It's at the western, southwesternmost tip. And it actually has enormous int uh, intensification there already because we have the townhouses on Brock Street, on the west side of Brock Street, and we have two-story uh, rented townhouses on the west side of Oakville. So the idea is, as per the proposal, to jump retail over Brock Street, dump it down at the end of Brookfield, and then move back into, um, into residential property. We already have those two intense properties there at the moment. So ladies and gentlemen, your worship, uh, based on the above and other residents' concerns, 
we strongly believe that this proposal should be rejected outright. Thank you very much for your information. Are there questions? Councillor Dunham. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for your uh, excellent presentation and all your work that you did in compiling the information. Um, we listened to the applicant in regards to um, what they had, um, what shall I say, planned for the future versus today. And we've sort of heard through this things, and I appreciate your point regarding the live work. Yes, we should be learning by our mistakes. Uh, what do you, in your opinion, see as a good fit on that property in terms of recognizing that we have to do a certain amount of intensification? Um, we wouldn't be looking at probably a single dwelling home, but what would be um, something that you feel would be uh, agreeable or compatible to the area? Uh, good question, Councillor. I think... Um, the consensus, uh, I, I suggest two things. One, first of all, I think you should listen to, obviously as you are, the remaining presentations, which are an important part and cover many, many of the other areas like density and traffic uh, and the townhomes and shadow, etc. So many of those issues are covered. I think our, our, our viewpoint would be this. Once the developer has been made aware of all the concerns that we currently have with the proposal for this area. Um, clearly, if he comes back uh, with a proposal that encompasses all the concerns that we have uh, regarding, uh, as a result of all the presentations, then I think it would be upon us to look at that proposal. But I think, uh, first of all, it would have to meet all the criteria because any development there um, should be based on the criteria that we are covering and presenting here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. Next delegation is Ms. Annika Faber Lee. Welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Good evening, Mayor Burton. Uh, members of council and neighbors. My name is Annika Faberway. I'm an owner and resident at 98 Brock Street, and I'm here representing the owners and residents of the Halton Condominium Corporation, number 106. There are none in Oakville who would be as negatively impacted by the proposed development as the owners in our townhouse complex. And I can tell you without hesitation that all of us are 100% against this, every aspect of this proposed development. Our units are on the east border. A number, of our, a number of our concerns have been already identified by Mr. Demix and Mr. Stevens, but I'd like to take a few minutes to present from our perspective. So I'm gonna to touch on proposed development transition, tree protection, drainage, pollution, increased density, reduced property value, and privacy. So first of all, the transition to the east side of the property. Well, there, there isn't any. Um, the midpoint of the property on the proposed development is 1.8 meters above the 98 Brock Street townhouses. This results in what the uh, t proposed builder would be calling a four-story building, having the impression of a five to six-story building. Uh, because of the grading, you'll see that later as well in an image uh, right beside our townhouses. The impact of the shadow from the proposed building would result in virtually no sun on the western face of our homes through the winter. Uh, with minimal sun through the summer. In regards to official studies, you're welcome to use my home and living room to see that sun. Uh, but from what we are able to determine, there were no shadow studies done for the east side. In the plans that were presented, there were some shadow images from all the other directions on the proposed building, but clearly none um, from our perspective, which is no surprise given the uh, serious, lack, or serious negative impact on our properties. There's no sun equals no ability to maintain our existing gardens, uh, nor would there be any chance for the proposed garden in the development plans to succeed. Uh, the development image currently suggests planting of trees in a little piece that I think was identified as mirroring our setback, uh, but that those trees are to be planted on top of the underground garage, so I would question, uh, one, without the sun, how they're gonna grow, and two, where the root structure would be headed. 
Further, there's no height transition on the east or north of the proposed development as per our town requirements. Additionally, the proposal has the building right along the lot line in the northeast corner, and I'll show an image of that shortly. One of the obvious questions would be how would they care for any building on that east facing side, uh, care for the wall on the east side of that building if they have to come into our property, which would be uh, trespassing to care for their building. So this is one image that shows, this is actually taken from the second uh, story, second floor at Fortino's. You can see here what I'm going to, moving forward, refer to as the valley. So it shows the grading coming down on the right from the house that's currently on the property. Um, and in fact, you can see the little black line that I've identified right here. That's the bottom of the property. And then here you're coming up to the midpoint. Um, and then if you have the new proposed building coming right up, there's zero setback at the front and zero setback right here. This would be your new view from Fortino's. You can add some pictures and, and a brick wall, but that's what the view would be. Uh, this is a little closer now to our property. So the image uh, shows a blue arrow, and this arrow is pointing to a black line. The black line here identifies where the wall is coming up to. Again, there's zero setback, so it would be right along here. There's a, a setback here to mirror our setback, uh, but the this is where the building would be. And if you can just imagine that black line now going up five to six stories from our perspective in the valley. The other aspect to consider, the proposed plan suggests or, or is asking for a change from 35% coverage for the, for the building area on the lot. Um, the new building would be over 50%, but doesn't actually, so one, it's already 50% of the land covered in building, but uh, further to that, it doesn't actually include any of the paved areas. So the, um, the driveway that would be coming down towards our townhouses or the new paved backyards for the, the townhouses there. The other aspect is the, the change in the height uh, from the seven townhouse two-story element to becoming a four, fourth floor uh, building. So tree protection, the number, tree number 30 on our property is not adequately, adequately protected in the plans. Additionally, there are two trees missing from the plans, uh, one of 3.3 meter diameter on our property line, and secondly, an oak tree that was actually planted by the town uh, when the last renovations were done, they had raised the ground um, against zoning rules and actually smothered the five trees that were along our border. Um, uh, all of those trees had been of a two two foot diameter, all gone now. Uh, one, one of the oak trees replanted by the town has lived, and of course we'd like to see this tree continue its good health. So a couple of things to note from this image, it's just a different perspective showing the grading from Brookfield at the far side where the white fence is, uh, and then coming to the foreground from our side. Uh, and also in the middle here, this is the tree that is right along the, the fence line that if there's a brick building, uh, brick building right beside that cannot survive. This is just to show what could have happened or what has happened from the drainage. So on the right hand side is the middle property of the three. And as you can see, the, the grounds were raised, but through drainage coming over the side, this wooden fence is no longer surviving particularly well. This is where the water used to run naturally through and is now uh, continues to run through there naturally down, down the block as well, but of course is now also facing extra uh, drainage issues coming over the driveway and, and not doing so well on this fence line. We are concerned that if this also gets raised, where does the drainage go? And as you can see from the slope, where abouts the new driveway would be, um, that just heads straight down into our backyards. Pollution. Uh, first issue of pollution would be the increased pavement would, would result in an urban heat island. All the heat would be trapped in the valley, uh, made up of the proposed driveway and the new townhouse patios. Secondly, the 87 car parking lot under the condo apartment building would result in increased noise pollution, which would be funneled and amplified, trapped between the buildings and again in the valley. And what about the increased traffic that would have to serve the retail spaces? Where would the delivery trucks be to drop off goods to the proposed retail? This has a direct impact on Brookfield and Lakeshore with the added noise pollution affecting the Brock Street residents. The air quality also becomes an issue, again with that the buildings on either side and the, the increased car traffic, the increase in smog, again in our backyards on Brock Street. And finally with the increased population and traffic, there's also uh, likely an increase in litter pollution 
which will likely roll down the slopes and the grading again to our backyards in the valley. The increased population also presents a concern. So currently zoning allows for 18 residents and the proposed development is looking for an increase to a minimum of 112 residents in that area. I was obviously thinking, oh no, 87 employees. Those are the ones in the retail. Um, so they would also be in the area and of course their, their cars would be impacting uh, the, the traffic and increase in density there as well. This number is not suited to the location. It's not suited to our neighborhood, as Mr. Stevens so well described earlier. There's no sidewalks, current bus route right behind the corner there. The numbers do not match our neighborhood. Uh, Mayor Burton, as you pointed out from a, a, a skyscape across here, this is from the corner at Brock and uh, Lakeshore on the north side. You can see all along the south side, that's looking to the east on the right, uh, left hand side and to the west on the right hand side. There is no building taller than Harvey's and our townhouses on this corner here. And that inclu includes looking all the way to the home uh, live work buildings to the east. The property value decreases as a part of this. By being adjacent to a property not in line with the surroundings, you create an atmosphere of, of discomfort in a place that not, people do not want to be buying their townhouses where they've, they've got this monster beside them. Finally, privacy concerns. This actually impacts all of us greatly in 98 Brock Street and in fact results in a lifestyle change. Our privacy would be completely annihilated with neighbors in the proposed development having the ability to easily see into our space, not to mention each car coming down the driveway of the proposed development. The use of our outdoor space would have to change to adapt to the pollution issues and the complete lack of sunlight touching our gardens and patios. Our indoor living would also change. The diminished sunlight coming into our homes would impact our heating bills. The types of plant we, plants we grow indoors would have to change due to different levels of light. And we could no longer walk around in our homes without considering peering eyes that would be able to see directly into our private lives. To finish, I think it's pretty clear that we at 98 Brock Street are vehemently opposed to this proposed development. Uh, there is no, uh, nothing about it that matches either our definition or yours of livable Oakville for this neighborhood. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your information. You've elicited at least one question from Councillor Adams, if you could. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Could you help us understand the history of your, uh, your townhome? I, I don't know whether you're uh, uh, involved in the uh, the condo board directly or not, but um, you showed some slides of the backyards uh, of the ones that behind that face backwards onto the site, and and I was looking at some of the pictures for uh, the south end, and it looks like the setbacks are are very small. Do you know the history of how that came to be? I don't know the history. No, okay. I know that there. Well. I really wouldn't say if I, I'd just be telling stories if I okay. said what thank, I Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Uh, maybe our staff at a later point could um, uh, help us understand how the local scene came to be. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sure they've taken note. Yeah. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Thank you very much for uh, bringing your information to council. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. And Mr. Joe Brandolino. Welcome, Mr. Brandolino. Council looks forward to your information. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Joe Brandolino. I, I live on uh, 51 Brookfield Road, which is just south of the development. Um, my presentation, I guess, has, encompasses a lot of what uh, the previous two presentations have, uh, but uh, concentrating more on the density and what the effect of the density would, or the proposed density of this development and how it would affect our area. Um, uh, some of the things I want to touch on is uh, just the, the reaction to the proposal. And I talked to a lot of the residents in our area, and uh, I, I think that it's interesting that this one has raised the hackles of a lot of people. Um, there's issues with the zoning bylaw I'd like uh, addressed, and, and part of it's been done tonight and brought up by the previous two speakers. And also some perceived problems with the proposed density and what it's going to do. And in summary, uh, I was going to shamelessly get on my knees and beg you to stop this thing, but we'll, 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 we'll use different methods maybe. So uh, the reaction has been uh, vehement uh, from most of the residents, and it's not just nimbyism. I think uh, a lot of people 
are, are looking or understand that there has to be development, but this one is just so out of character with the neighborhood and the way that uh, the neighborhood should be developed in, in our opinion. And the sense is that there's this huge development, as pretty as it might be when it's done, it's just massive and it's in a small spot, a uh, small space, and it's in a neighborhood that has nothing like it. It would be an eyesore, no matter how well uh, architected it would be. So I'm going to go through issues with the zoning bylaw. Um, some of the facts I have in my table here may be slightly off, but it won't change the spirit of, of what I'm trying to get to. Um, if you look at the, the properties involved here, the way I understand it, and I may have misinterpreted some of the uh, issues, but uh, 174 Lakeshore and 91 Brookfield are R8 or modified R8 zoning, and I thought 87 Brookfield was a pure residential R04. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but I could be wrong. So what I've done here just to contrast what's going to happen with the proposed amendments here, I think they want all three uh, properties to go to C3R zoning, and uh, just for reference, it's 0.2845 hectares, uh, and that'll come into play with, uh, for the density. Uh, the present units that I have here, that I've uh, done here, this is what could be possible under the present zoning. So you can, on 174 Lakeshore, 91 Brookfield, you can have seven townhomes, as Kathy had mentioned previously, and one home on 87 Brookfield, the way I understand it. On the, the new proposal, as we all know, is 400 uh, square meters of retail and 33 apartments on the first two sites and four townhomes on the third. Well, if you do the math, uh, it works out that we're going to end up with 28 units per hectare if you use the present zoning and you'll end up with 130 units per hectare under their proposed amendments. Uh, that, that just sounds like a massive jump on one aspect of the whole zoning process. That's just one aspect. Another one would be height. Right now, they're kind of limited to 9 meters under this zoning, and they want to go to 15 meters. And I think it was, it's been said by the previous two speakers, it, in some spots, um, it could per be perceived as a 21 meter or 18 meter, and I'll show that in another <clears throat> slide I have. So really what we're looking at is a proposal for 300%, 360% uh, density increase in the way our, us lay people look at it, and the prospect of 50 plus more people, and I use this very conservative estimate with 33 um, apartments or town um, uh, condo units and four townhomes, it'll be a lot more than that, I would think, but even if you look at it, 50 more cars trying to negotiate, negotiate that little sliver of land because uh, Brookfield has no sidewalks there. There's always parking on the, on the west side because of the other townhomes. And it, it's just a very difficult place to negotiate, and I will address that as well. They're also looking for a 130% increase in, uh, in height. And that's very uncharacteristic of our neighborhood. And <clears throat> I think it was very eloquently stated by Annika that this would cause a lot of trouble for their uh, unit in particular but what, uh, what Mr. Stevens was saying earlier is also true that right now when we walk through our neighborhood, we see nothing but trees. Thank you very much. It's, it's a great way to live. And uh, the zero setback is, is also a big problem. And uh, uh, the issue of replanting trees or having proper drainage is a problem. So I'll just go through a few perceived issues I see with uh, the proposal. And just to put it in perspective, uh, along here would be uh, 98 Brock or the other townhomes that Annika was talking about. And you can see that there is zero setback all along here. There's about 18 meters of zero setback, zero on Lakeshore, zero on Brookfield. So it's just this big mass. Uh, and uh, I understand that there's probably some, some merit to the actual design in terms of the design, but where it's at is where we're having an issue with. Uh, one of the problems, and it's been stated twice already, there's only a very small area that's six meters by probably 20 meters, I guess, uh, in that range that uh, would be able to take some uh, additional trees or replanting of trees, and we question the viability of those trees for uh, what's been stated. And everything else is just paved, and uh, it's, a, it's a difficult issue for, uh, for line of sight. 
I, I use the wrong elevation here, but the spirit of, of this slide is still intact. What I've done is looked at just the appropriate um, uh, relative heights here. So the existing, uh, what I've done here is taken away the townhomes, and this is Brock Street at the bottom here, and I put an approximate 5 foot 11 individual standing there, just to put it in perspective. Uh, all, of the, all of the stated heights in the proposal would be referenced to Brookfield Road, so that's zero meters, but Brock is 1.8 meters below in grade, and approximately that's where the backyards are. So they want, um, if you think about what they, are, they will be looking at, even though this spot, I agree, would have a six meter setback. I haven't shown that here, but at the same time, it's just so bloody close to these people. And, and it is a big problem for them in particular and for the rest of us, just for the height issues. So uh, explanation on why we said 21 meters. Uh, it does say that um, with the elevator penthouse, it would be at 21 meters and this is to scale here. And we're assuming that the amenity area which they're asking for 25% of the full roof area, that will be at least 18 meters to make it viable, I would think, three meters for a room, more or less. Um, so another uh, one of the problems we see is traffic. And let me explain how this is organized. Uh, this is Lakeshore Road, as it says, and this is Brookfield, and the A would be approximately where the, um, where the development is proposed to be. Uh, we have traffic light on Maurice and Lakeshore and at Brock and Lakeshore. That often in the morning, if you, I don't know if any of you live close by or drive by, this, this black arrow here, it, it's very congested. We have, this is the uh, driveway into Loblaws. There's kids uh, walking to school at St. Thomas Aquinas and there's uh, school buses and there's people that use Lakeshore in lieu of QEW. It, it's really quite a, a problem. Now, we're all suffering with that. We're not saying that that's unique, but it's unique because we have this kind of congested area. Plus, the problem that if you have 50, 60, 70 more people trying to get out in the morning, and I know it won't be all at once, and there's uh, statistics, et cetera, that you could uh, apply to this, but we also have dead ends, as uh, Mr. Stevens was saying, at both Brookfield and Lakewood and Brookfield Crescent. They normally would uh, go up Brookfield, but I think that this would cause a loop where people would congest all the neighboring arterial roads and cause a lot more traffic. And again, remember, there are a lot of kids and a lot of elderly people in our neighborhood, and there are no sidewalks. And right now it's kind of relaxed, has been described. And uh, we, we have a kind of an issue with this kind of increased frenetic um, uh, existence. It just uh, doesn't make sense. The other thing is precedent. And I know that we have a very a fair, uh, council and mayor, and every development is looked on its individual merits. But if we look at our area within two or three blocks, we have an enormous amount of, uh, what can I call it, low-lying uh, low fruit or low-hanging fruit for developers because a lot of these properties, although they are, I'm not saying that any of these are under development, but a lot of these uh, are, uh, I guess, properties that are very large pieces of land or decent pieces of land with older buildings on them. So they're just prime and ripe for development. And we're really worried about proposals going through that increase the density. If I was a businessman and I bought one of these other properties and I wanted something similar to what existed across the street or one block away, I think I would put up a fairly decent fight on that. And um, we're just worried about these sort of issues. And especially for the fact that there's already townhouses at the end of our street, right across, the, that's the red townhouses at the bottom here. And it's a fairly big property. And uh, we're just, again, worried about it. In, in uh, summary, we're worried about the whole mass of this pro property uh, proposal. And it, there's no setbacks. There's traffic issues, pedestrian safety. Many residents will be left completely in the dark. And uh, the trees will be removed and no way to replant them. Anyway, it's undesirable, un, uh, and I'm not going to beg anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot, you. guys. Thank you very much for your information. Um, Madam Clerk, the next delegation. Uh, Ludi Hobbs. Who 
Who's the next? Uh, good evening. Just before you begin, Mr. Hab, uh, Mr. Bailey, are you so good? You're in good position for because you're next. I was just going to try and do a little stage managing here, and so if if you're a delegation tonight, if you could move towards the center, then then you'd be better. You wouldn't be as inconvenienced as Mr. Hab was by our layout here. So thank you for coming. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be brief. Um, I think most of what has been said by uh, the three eloquent speakers behind uh, really has focused on how many of us feel in that area. Uh, my name is Ludi Habs. I live at uh, 207 Lakewood Drive. I'm a relative uh, new, uh, new resident of Oakville. I've been here only since 1974. Uh, my wife, however, was born uh, on Holyrood uh, Avenue, so we've lived in this area for quite a long time. And she, I believe, is going to be uh, 60 very soon, and she's lived all her life in Oakville. So we are long Oakville residents. My, um, when I've been listening to the proposals here and also to some of the ideas from livable Oakville, there's one thing that I have a concern with, with uh, future developments, including this one here. On April 3rd, I attended a meeting uh, where the proposed development, I guess, was shown. And I think, um, I think someone mentioned before that 34 residents uh, were at that meeting. That represents a very small number. Now, why did a very small number attend? Because we have not been given information about this particular proposal. The only reason I'm here today and the only reason I attended the April 3rd meeting is I had a direct email from my War II counselor, and I thank her very much for that. I live on Lakewood Drive, and uh, I have to use the exact same access to Lakeshore Road. When I attended the meeting on April 3rd, I asked one of the town people there why we were not apprised of this particular development, this particular idea. And I was told because legally we only are supposed to give you a letter if you are within 100 meters of a proposed development. I suppose I'm not within 100 meters. Neither is most of Lakewood. So what basically happened was that uh, this particular person said, well, don't worry about it because now you're here, you can put your name down and you'll get things in the future. But what about all the other residents that did not receive any information? And by looking at the residents here, I would put to you that probably there would be four times as many here if they had received this information. I would like to propose that in the future that uh, town staff and Oakville Council uh, look into the idea of giving people in a residential area that are more than 100 meters away of any proposed development an official letter, and I propose that it would be closer to 400 or 500 meters, because 100 meters is completely, completely unrealistic. Uh, we are all part of, of, of the same road. I live on a cul-de-sac, I live on a dead-end street, and many of us are, are not here because we basically did not know about this development. Some people say, well, don't you drive by this place all the time? Then you see the sign. Well, as was, uh, I think, um, as Mr. Bartolino stated, many of us can get onto Lakeshore Road, so we take the back streets and we take Burnett, and we do not see these things. So any letter coming from town, town staff, regarding any future development such as this would be very, very much appreciated, and I think you would find many more residents here willing to participate in the democratic process. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, well, well, we've already pretty much announced him, uh, Paul Bailey. Welcome, Paul. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, good evening. Um, I'm, uh, I'm the president of SCORA Residents Association. We uh, have 170 members, mostly to the west of this property. Um, I guess, my comments here will probably be more sort of from a, a sort of a big picture point of view, but um, I mean, a lot of the good comments that have been made before, I'll, I'll touch on a few of them, but basically our SCORE's main opposition to this proposal is, I guess, related to generally overbuilding the site. 
We don't think the proposal's in keeping with the neighboring properties and or the uh, optimal development of Lakeshore west of uh, Kerr Street. Uh, we see 37 new units going in where there are previously three. That's a 12 times uh, increase or multiple of 12. Uh, we see shadowing as an issue, especially for the, for the condos to directly to the, uh, to the east. Uh, some of those properties in the wintertime, when the sun's low in the sky, they're not going to see the sun after 4 o'clock. And uh, that's, to me, unacceptable. That could be 6.30, 7 o'clock in the evening in the summertime. That's not fair. Uh, we see crowding as an issue for uh, for the for the adjacent uh, property to the east as, as well, um, towering over, and you know they're basically going to be living in an alley with uh, with an alley existing behind their their property. Um, the live work units has already been touched on. I kind of agree with what's been said already. Our the building height issue when I saw that it could go up to 70 feet above. Uh, above Lakeshore, including the, the penthouse for the elevator, uh, I thought to myself, There's, this is just going to stand out for decades from now. And uh, I guess that's, uh, that's an issue. Um, <clears throat> I guess in terms of the streetscape generally, we've got a couple of properties nearby that could be redeveloped in the not so far future, especially to the west, those, uh, those townhomes, the white ones. And just looking at, I realize there are a few doctors in Toronto, I believe, that own that property, but I'm not, I don't know them personally, but um, I believe at some point that property may be sold to a developer and, and developed on a large scale, and that could be a $100 million project. That's a, that's a big property there. There's currently 15 other projects underway in, within uh, a 1.2 kilometer um, range. Um, totaling about $589 million. There's a lot of development going on in this area, but this particular one stands out. It does not mesh with what's going on around it. To the south, to the east, to the west, it doesn't, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really mesh with the area. I guess the drainage issues are also a concern. You know, it's a natural sort of uh, gully there, and um, we'd like to see that um, intact and maintained the way it is. Uh, the mature trees, there hasn't been a whole lot of talk of trees, and I know there's not a lot of um, ability of council to deny an application based on losing trees, but basically every tree on this property is going to be leveled, and including the ones that are on the municipal property um, bordering Lakeshore. And that, to us, is, um, I guess, a problem because this is really the last stand of trees, a significant stand of trees. This is like one of two or three that exist between um, St. Jude Cemetery and Allen Street. And um, if we're just gonna get rid of all the trees in the sort of downtown stretch of Lakeshore, um, we're gonna be looking more like Port Credit or Etobicoke or something. Um, <clears throat> I, guess, uh, I guess the other problem is that they're not leaving any space whatsoever for trees to actually grow to any significant height for root systems to develop. You're not going to get, you know, 40, 50 foot trees out of these, you know, these, these sort of planted, um, for lack of a better term, tree coffins that, you know, where you've got like four feet squared kind of thing. I realize the, the towns recently changed some of their planting regulations, and I understand that, but uh, from 15 cubic meters to 30 cubic meters, but things are, you know, these trees are not going to have a, a real chance to grow to what the neighboring areas uh, or neighboring properties trees are at. Um, <clears throat> privacy has already been touched on. Loss of reasonable expected privacy to the condos on Brock Street. I think that's just unfair, period. Um, street parking has already been touched on. There's nothing on Lakeshore. There's a bike lane going through there. That should be, state, that should be maintained. Um, if people want street level parking, you know, to go to Burnett or, or or Brock or to uh, Brookfield, um, you're going to run into traffic issues and just safety issues generally. There's no, you know, with the exception of Brock Street, there are no, there are no sidewalks uh, and Lakeshore, of course. Um, <clears throat> traffic, the additional residences and associated vehicles and all the day trips, morning trips, afternoon trips, evening trips, all the stuff that's associated with that and, and the intersection of Brookfield and Lakeshore, that's all important stuff. I guess you know, in terms of commercial zone, uh, the commercial zoning, which is currently on that property, um, I guess uh, just because a, a property has been zoned at some point in the past as commercial doesn't necessarily mean it has to be developed to that potential. 
Um, in field development, most people are re you know realistic and realize that that there has to be some intensification, even on properties like these. These are small properties, but you know um, I guess that could be probably be done in a more reasonable manner than going to this extreme. Um, it's our feeling that the current zoning is more than sufficient to uh, for infill development proposals and that you'd be able to defend that at the OMB. Um, we recommend that the town deny uh, the zoning application and ask that the property uh, owner return to council with a proposal that sort of meets the existing zoning for the property. Um, <clears throat> We ask that the town supports redevelopment more fitting with the surrounding properties, the character of the area, and, uh, um, and look for options that are still intensifying but are more maintaining the, uh, the character of the area. Um, <clears throat> we ask that uh, trees, all trees on the municipal lands be protected. Um, we've lost a lot of trees in this in this area of Oakville. I mean, we literally, I, I, between the 15 developments, I'm guessing upwards of a thousand trees. That's a lot of canopy gone. And I realize that they're planting new trees, and there are uh, sort of formulas in place for re, you know for uh, replacing trees. But you know, a tree isn't always equal to a tree, kind of thing. And you know. Some of these, uh, some of the space that they give for these tree systems or the, the root systems just aren't sufficient. And uh, I guess finally, uh, we'd like to see the main, uh, main maintenance and um, preservation of that drainage basin between the Brookfield and the Brock Street uh, residences. And um, and that pretty much sums up my statement. Thank you very much for your comprehensive list. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Andrew Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, Council, Your Honour. I bring actually nothing new to the table that you haven't already heard this evening from the various parties that are here. I live at 150. Burnett Street. I think I'm the only representative on Burnett Street at this particular moment. Um, the whole proposal is really not suitable for the area that we're in. Um, I live right at the corner of Burnett and Brock, at the top of the little rise. Um, if people can't get out from Brookfield onto Lakeshore, they will come down the little hill on Burnett, they speed down and go around the corner onto Brock Street. I can see potentials of accidents taking place there with people exiting from the park. Lots of kids are starting to use that park there. So I feel personally that the, the whole proposal should be brought back to council with more in keeping for what the neighborhood deserves. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your information. Are there any other delegations listed? Are there any other members of the public with new information, additional information for council on this matter? Thank you. Councillor Duddick? We are out of delegations. A motion to receive would be welcome. Thank you. Motion to receive. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed to any? Carried. Thank you. That is public hearing item number one, item number seven on the agenda. Now, um, how about a two-minute recess to permit the orderly evacuation of the chamber? <laughs> we, will, we will resume at the call of the chair momentarily. 